Hey, welcome to Abundant Living. We are so glad hey. that you made the choice to join us tonight for church. I'm Mark McGaffin. Hey, this is Cruz Ramirez, and it is Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Let's go. Hey, Woo. you know there is something special Come on. about Wednesday There's nights. something about Wednesday. At Abundant Living. Can you feel it? I know you can. Come on, we church. Feel it. You better get ready. You better get ready. <laughs> tonight is going to be one of those oh, nights. It's going to be one of those nights. My gosh. My goodness. Hey, listen. We're so excited that you've brought us into your living room and that we still still get to have church yeah. together. The doors of the church might be closed, Mark. But, but you come on, it's wide open. Let's go. The church is alive and well here in El Paso. Oh man, we're still making a difference. We're still making a difference. We're still being generous. Hey, I want to let you know about something really cool that our church family did this week, and it's still happening. Listen, uh, we got a chance to partner with the El Paso Food Bank and impact so many families wow. by giving away food at our West Side Church. You know, we're gonna be doing that all this week. Tomorrow morning, we'll be there set up. So if you need some food, please make sure you or people that you might know that need some food, make sure they go by. We would love the opportunity to serve them and make sure that they are well supplied. That's why God put us in this city, man. Yeah, make, a know, difference. make a difference. But, but hey, before we go any further, we need to stop right now and Come welcome on. a very special group of people. Yeah. If it's your first time joining us hey, here welcome. for church, welcome yeah. to church. Hey, we're so glad you're here. We'd love the opportunity to connect yeah. with you and just bring you into this incredible church family that is Abundant Living. So if it is your first time, why don't you take a moment and text us at the number below. Our team is available and cannot wait to meet you and your family and have us live this abundant life yeah. together, together. Man. Come on. Oh man, T today's service. I mean, it's it's, it's the ready. whole thing. We're talking we're worship prayer, giving, teaching. So no matter where you're at, let's get ready to have some real church, come on, we're gonna okay? Go full extension? Full extension, let's, let's get loud. This is your chance to lead worship. Woo, come it's on. right now. Grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, raise your voice, turn the volume up, bring your real Bible out. Yes, let's Woo, go. Take let's some notes. Go. Write the notes out, tag us on the notes. Let us know where you're watching from. Yeah. Let us know what is speaking to you. Shout pastor down today. Come on. If you don't know what a good shout down is, it's was like, hey, come on pastor, you're Better saying that. that good. Say that word. Ooh, come that on. was for me. Let's go. That was for my wife. All right. So anyway, we're excited that you're here. Let's get rid of the worship, Mark. Let's get ready to worship. All the way in. We come love on, you. We'll see you soon.
Mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loose God, we believe it Yes, we can see it Wonders are still what you do And bodies are still being raised Giants are still being slain God, we believe it Yes, we can see it Wonders are still what you do Come on, sing it out We are here for
invite you to lift your hands, to lift your voice and sing with us right now. Come on, let's worship Jesus. Yeah, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, we sing. Oh, the wounds of my Savior's scars broken for all to see. By His love, He would set us free. The cross is our victory. Oh, the blood washes white as snow. Strip me of all of my wrongs. Once condemned to a sinner's life. Hallelujah, my past is gone. Jesus died to set me free. I will praise His name forever, for the cross is our victory. As we do in every church service at Abundant, 
We're going to take a moment now and honor God by taking communion and praying for you and your family. So if you're there at home, wherever you are, feel free to grab a communion cup if you have some from the church, or just grab a piece of bread and and some juice of any type. We don't have to get religious about this. This is about honoring God. But would you get it? I know many people are dealing with incredible situations and circumstances during these unprecedented times. And before we take communion, I just want to remind you that Abundant is here for you. We're here for you. We have set up some new programs that we've never had before in the way that we're doing it. And I just want to take a moment and tell you about them. You'll see on the screen an email come up right now. It's care at alfc.com. If you're struggling right now with anxiety, with depression, with fear, if you just need someone to talk to, to, I want you to know that our counselors, our pastors are here for you. We're setting up uh, phone call counseling or even via FaceTime or Skype, uh, go to meetings, whatever. We'll, We'll do whatever it takes to be able to help you, to talk to you, to pray with you. As many of you know, we've been continuing doing huge food giveaways and outreach And we just want to know if you need help. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us, to contact us, so that we can be there for you. As you know, the rule at Abundant is this. If we can help, we will. If we can't, we'll be honest with you. But if we can, we will. So hopefully now you have your communion cup. Would you take it in your hand and let's pray. Father, we honor you. We glorify you. We thank you. Lord, we believe that you are greater. You are stronger. And you are mightier than this situation that we are facing. We believe that the coronavirus is defeated in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your men and women, wherever they are right now, Lord. I pray for them, and I believe that you are their source and their supply. I believe that you are their helper and their friend, their counselor and wisdom. Father, I thank you that your body was broken so that we could be healed. And I just believe that healing is in our land in the name of of Jesus. We eat this bread, Lord, in honor and remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And now, Lord, we have this cup, the cup that represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary. And Father, we thank you that his blood was shed so that ours will not be. And because he gave his life for us, we are accepted into your family, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you love us, you care for us, and you have forgiven us and washed away the sin of our past. We drink this, Lord, in honor, in worship, and in celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus on the cross. Praise the Lord. Let's head back into worship, and then we'll continue our service. Jesus, we thank you that you are a way maker than in any circumstance and situation that we find ourselves in, Lord. You are the one that moves the path for us. God, we thank you that when there seems to be no way, your word says that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life that satisfies. Thank you so much, Jesus. Come on, let's continue to worship. I just want to encourage you right now to lift your hands. Grab your children. And let's just declare this promise over our life. That our God is our way maker. Come on. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Sing with me. You are here moving in my midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Who you we are. sing, we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Make 
miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are here, touching every heart, I worship you. church family. Wow, I'm at our West Church right now on Tuesday morning, actually. And we behind me, you can see that we're doing an amazing outreach of giving food to families. We are so proud and honored and excited to join together with the El Paso Food Bank to make a difference during these very difficult times in our community and our nation. And so behind me, you can see we've got food here today. And we're going to feed a thousand families. And all of these volunteers back here are church members from our church family. Isn't that incredible? That they would come out this day and uh, serve on these lines and reach into people's lives and make a difference. 
We're going to be doing this at least all of this week. And uh, if you're interested, just go to our social media accounts for times and things. I believe they start at 10 o'clock. We try to go till 2. And so, you know, we may do more, but it will really depend on the food bank. And we're very excited and very thankful. And I just want to encourage you again today. Once again, the people of our church are exhibiting one of our core values, which is extreme generosity. So thank you. Thanks to all the volunteers. Thank you for praying. And let's keep believing that this is going to come to an end really soon, sooner rather than later. Amen. Amen. Love you all. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Can't wait to get back together with you. I want to talk to you now about our giving. You know, uh, the Bible says that God blesses us so we can be a blessing. You know, even in the middle of all these things that are going on, our church is feeding literally hundreds of families in El Paso, really, really several thousand every week. We're taking care of people, we're helping people, and we can do this because of our amazing serving family and because of our giving family. Our, we need you, we need you now. We need you to honor the Lord with your giving. I know it's different because you're having to give through text to give or to give online. But you know what? Come on, let's make the change. Let's not be stubborn. You know, let's let's do it. Now, you can still mail it in. The address will be on the screen. You can drop it by the office if you want to. But it's so much easier just to do it online or through text to give. So why do we give, right? We give, Jesus said in Luke 6, because we believe God has given to us. Is God still giving to you? Yes, He is. Right? Yes, He is. Yeah, I know. We're in troubled times. But our giving is an expression of our faith that we are going to come out. Why? Because our giving leaves our hand, but it goes into our future and becomes our harvest. So I'm giving, right? I'm giving. I'm giving towards my stand-up and my recovery. You believing for that? I am. So what do we give? We give our tithe and our offering. Our tithe and our offering is a show of our respect, our worship, our honor, and how much we love God and how grateful we are for what He's done for us. And so let's honor the Lord today and let's believe. Let's believe the rest of Luke 6.38. Give because God has given to you and it shall be given to you. Say it with me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your pockets. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So there you see the instructions on the screen about how to give through text to give. You can give online at alfc.com. As I said a moment ago, if you still like to write a check, that's cool. You can mail it to us. The address is there, 1000A. Don't forget the A. 1000A Valley Crest Drive, El Paso, of course, 79907. All right? If you're still out and about a little bit, Right, you can drop it by our offices, regular business hours, okay? And uh, there'll be somebody there to take to receive your tithe and offering from you. Thank you, God bless you, and thank you for your faithfulness. We need you now more than ever. And you know, I'm just believing. You know, the first week or so of online church, our giving really dropped. But I believe that we're gonna rally, and we're gonna stand up, and we're gonna continue to do what's right, and we're gonna believe God through our giving for our future. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. This is Abundant Living Faith Center, a church made up of people from all over the world. Wherever you are here at Abundant Living, we always have the opportunity for you to experience what life can be. We want you to experience the wonderful life, a life our church family would love to share with you. So from our family to yours, All right, now it's time for us to get into our message. I'm really excited to share this message with you today. I know that you're at home. Thank you for joining us for Church at Home. I hope that you have downloaded our app. If for some reason you haven't, would you do that right now? You can download our church app. It's free by searching ALFC. Now, why am I sharing that with you? Because my notes are on the app, and I would love it if you would follow along with me. Plus, there's all sorts of other amazing free resources on there. If you don't
don't want to get the app, then that's okay too. Would you just take some notes, grab your Bible, grab your phone. Maybe you use the version Bible app like I do. Would you just follow around along with me? Let's get the most out of church at home that we possibly can. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about hope. Hope. Maybe when I said that word, you thought to yourself, you know what, Shannon, right now I do not have hope. Well, I want to take the next few moments to encourage you to build your hope. Even in this terrible season that our country is facing, we as God's children can have hope. Hope. Let's go first to Hebrews 11. We're going to begin reading in verse 1. Famous scripture. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pastor Charles has been encouraging us about our faith. So we've been talking about faith already. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The Passion Translation says, faith brings our hopes into reality. It becomes the evidence of the things not seen. I want to break this verse down for you for a moment. That word hoped is a positive expectation. Now, the truth is a lot of us have different ideas about what hope is. Well, the Bible describes hope as a positive expectation. So no matter what season we're in, we're to have a positive expectation. It says now faith is the substance or the reality the reality or the guarantee, the confidence of the things that we've got a positive expectation about. It becomes the evidence of the things not seen. That word evidence there means conviction. Conviction. It means certain persuasion. So faith is the substance of what we are hoping for, of our positive expectation. Now, before I go any further in today's message, I need to take a moment to just encourage you. Right now, you should have a positive expectation. You've got to believe that better days are in front of you. And I want you to kind of let that begin to stir in your heart so that as I share the next series of verses with you, you really begin to open your heart to receive this idea that even though the news has been spewing negativity, Even though everywhere we read, we're reading one moment of uncertainty after another, even though things seem to have spiraled in a direction that none of us could have anticipated, you and I as God's children can still have a positive expectation. And that positive expectation combined with our faith, which is our believing and our speaking, combined with that becomes the evidence for what we're believing for. Now let's go to Psalms 146. I love this passage. I'm going to read it to you out of the Message Bible. It says, don't put your life in the hands of experts who know nothing of life of salvation life. How many of you know right now watching me at home that the life that you and I have as children of God is our salvation life? It is not an ordinary life. It is the God kind of life. Let me remind you of John 10, 10. It says the thief comes to steal, kill, and to to destroy, but Jesus came so that you and I could live the God kind of life. The God kind of life. You've got to begin believing in the God kind of life. Amen. It goes on to say mere humans don't have what it takes. When they die, their projects die with them. Instead, get your help from God. Put your hope in God and no real blessing. I believe that this passage of scripture is a timely word for this moment. It says, church Don't put your trust in the experts that you see in the world. Now, that doesn't mean we don't listen to them. That doesn't mean we don't use uh, wisdom. We don't follow what they're telling us to do. But our trust is not in them. Our trust and our hope is in God. And when we put our hope in God, then we will experience real blessing, which is the God kind of life, the salvation life, the life that Jesus went to the cross so that you could live. 
Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Again, I'm reading out of the Message Bible. In verse 18, it says, When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word a rock-solid guarantee. Think about that for a moment. God's word to you is a rock-solid guarantee. It goes on to read, God cannot break his word. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that God's word is true? That God's word has a rock solid guarantee that he cannot break his word? I hope that you're believing that. You know, the Bible says that God's promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen. That God's word is true. That God cannot break his word. It goes on to read. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. You and I, we who have run for our very lives, have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. Grab the promised hope of Jesus and never let go. Then it goes on to tell us why we should do it. this. It says this hope is an un breakable spiritual lifeline. This hope reaches past all appearances straight to the presence of God where your Savior, Jesus Christ, has gone ahead of you and is seated at his permanent post as our high priest and he is there making intercession for us. Amen. Jesus is already there and he is moving on our behalf. So grab hold of this promised hope. Why? Because it is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. You know, this week while I've been at home, I've seen all the news reports. I've read about them on my phone. And more than ever, I have needed to grab hold of something that I can count on. You know, I was thinking to myself, I think one of the hardest parts of what we're going through is that the news is constantly changing. They tell us one thing in the morning, and then I hear something else in the afternoon. And then in the evening, someone texts me and tells me the report has changed again. I don't even know where or what to think. But this this verse kind of solidifies this this reasoning for me that there is one thing that is not going to change. And that one thing is God's word. His word is true. It is unbreakable. He backs up his word. It has a guarantee. I love this verse because it says God can't. He can't break his word. So all I've got to do is grab hold with both hands of that very promise, of the promise of God's guaranteed word. I'm going to grab hold of that hope and I'm going to hold on to it and I'm not going to let go because it is an un breakable spiritual lifeline. Now, why is that so important? Because like never before, the enemy is at work. He is working to get you to let go. He is working his hardest to steal your hope. The coronavirus is trying to steal our hope. And as God's children, we must come back to this place. We must be reminded that if we don't have hope, then we don't have faith because faith is the substance of things hope for. And if we don't have faith, then we are defeated. Why? Because this is the victory that overcomes the world. That victory is our faith, my family. You and I have got to grab hold of this hope. We cannot let go no matter what. We've got to place our trust in the truth of God's word and the unbreakable promises of God. We've got to believe in this spiritual lifeline that you and I have that takes us straight to the throne room of grace where we've got a promise that says, That when we come to the throne room of grace, that there is mercy and help in time of need. Mercy and help. I know right now you are believing for God's help. You are believing 
for his mercy. And that mercy and help is to be found at the throne room of grace. And how incredible is this? Just get this picture inside your spirit. See, I think my job today is to just kind of encourage you, to remind you that better days are ahead. Just get this picture inside your spirit that Jesus is already there. He's already there and he is making intercession on your behalf. So when we grab onto this throne, we get straight to the throne room of grace where that help that we need is always there. Amen. Now, Jeremiah 29, 11, truly one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thought, says the Lord, those are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you a future and a hope a future and a hope. You know, I was watching the news the other day and and just like in a matter of seconds, I began to feel like my future was slipping away. Maybe you felt that same thing, like my future was slipping away. And in a span of about 30 seconds, I began to meditate on this verse. It came up in my spirit. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Those plans are not to not give me a future. Those plans are to give me a future. And because I know I have a future, then I also know I have a hope. Amen. I have a hope for my future, a hope for better days. Remember, what is hope? It is a positive expectation of good. There's another definition of hope, and it is the forward view of the righteous. The forward view. As we walk through this season, it is important that as God's children, that we keep our eyes on what lies ahead, that we keep a forward view. Now listen to this passage in the Message Bible. It says, this is God's word. I'll show up and I'll take care of you. You see, you can only have a future if someone is taking care of you. This, by the, this passage says God's going to show up and he's going to take care of you. Why? Because he promised it. It says, I'm going to show up and take care of you as I promised. And I'm going to bring you back. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. I've got plans to take care of you. I'm not going to abandon you. I've got plans to give you the future that you hope for. Right now, some of you are just hoping for any kind of future. You've been listening to all these negative stories and you're thinking to yourself, my God, I hope that there is something ahead of me. I want to remind you today that God's future for you is not just an ordinary future. It's the future that you've been hoping for. Start believing for that even right here in this season. Start believing that the days that lay ahead are going to be days that are fantastic, days that you have been hoping for. You see, hope is the purpose of Jesus. Hope is the point of your salvation. And I pray that even in the midst of what we are facing today, that we can have hope. That we are still living with hope in our hearts, with a positive expectation. Be encouraged today to believe that you have something to look forward to. You see, the devil wants you to start believing that there's nothing better ahead. He wants to rob you of your future and you cannot allow that to happen. You've got to resist that. You've got to rebuke the devil and you've got to claim Jeremiah 29 over your life. My God has assured me. That no matter where I am standing right now, I have a hope and a future. He's going to take care of me. He is not going to abandon me. He's going to get me through this. I'm not going to have just an ordinary future. I'm going to have a future that meets my expectations, a future that I am hoping for. You see, we need to remind ourselves like never before that we serve a God of hope. That's who he is. We serve a God of hope. If I could be so bold to say abundant living is a church of hope. That's who we are. And because of the coronavirus, we did not stop being a church of hope. We may be a church at home right now, but we are still a church of hope. Therefore, we must be people of hope. Amen.
We must hold on to hope. We must walk through these next few weeks with a positive expectation. Romans 15 verse 13, may the God of hope, that's who he is. He is the God of hope. May he fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Why? So that you may abound in hope. God doesn't want you to just have a little bit of hope. He wants you to abound in hope. And how do we get to this place of abounding in hope? Well, let me break it down for you. Number one, he is our God of hope. Therefore, you and I are children of hope. You see, if our heavenly father is the God of hope, then that makes you and I children of hope. That means we are capable of remaining in hope. Amen. It is in us to hold on to hope and not let go. Now, with hope comes joy. That's what Romans 15 says. And what is joy? Well, the definition of joy is that it is an anticipation of something good. Maybe you're like, you know what? I don't feel very joyful right now. In fact, I do not feel happy at all. Well, that's okay. Hear the meaning. The meaning of joy doesn't mean that you're bouncing up and down and laughing and giggling. The meaning of joy means that you have an anticipation of good. So with hope comes joy. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is the very strength that you need to get through this season. So with hope comes joy. With hope also comes peace, which is tranquility in your heart and mind. My family, I know I need that peace right now. I know you do too. So the God of hope, our God, and we as children of hope, he desires to fill us as his children with joy and with peace so that we may abound in hope so that we can still continue to believe that we have a positive expectation for our future. Amen. And why is that important? Because when you live this way, then God will empower you to do what you need to do. And therefore, you can continue to abound in hope. Moms, dads, I know right now you're at home with your kids. And that can be a tough thing, right? I was trying to have a business meeting yesterday at home. And in the background, my kids and Jared's kids, they kept running back and forth. They were interrupting everything. And they were fighting and they were arguing and they were laughing the next minute. And I just started to feel frustrated on the inside. And I thought, my goodness, I'm never going to get this work done. You see, right now I need God to empower me to get through this season. Amen. And I've got a hope that one day those kids are going to go back to school. Can I get an amen? (laughs) But right now, well, I've got to believe that God is going to empower me to somehow love on my kids, somehow maintain peace, somehow make sure they're not fighting. And at the same time, get the work done that I need to do. And you know what? I've got all the confidence in the world because God gave me those kids. They are my gift from God. He gave them to me and he is making me empowered and able to do what I need to do. Amen. So the God of hope, we are children of hope. That should excite you today. First Peter one, verse three, it says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to to his abundant mercy, has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God has given you and I a living hope, a living hope. That is hope for every day of our lives. And let me be so bold to say that means that that hope is alive and it is hope for this moment. It is hope for what the world is facing right now. It is hope for this season. Living hope didn't stop being alive because coronavirus spread on the earth. The hope is still living and God has begotten you to this living hope. And when you study that verse out, it says that we are to spend our existence partnered alongside this living hope, that this living hope should become the narrative of how we spend our lives. You see, my family, hope is not a theory. Hope is real. Hope is tangible. Hope is living. Hope is what is going to get you up in the morning. Hope is what is going to get you through these days while you're at home. 
Hope is what is going to pull America out of this season. Hope is real. It is living. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hope is God's promises to you. You see, hope is who our Savior is. He is the God of hope and you cannot separate him from hope. And that hope is alive on the inside of you right here, right now, as you're watching me, if you are a child of God, hope is living on the inside of you. That's why even in the midst of uncertain circumstances, you can live with the narrative of your life, with the hour by hour, the minute by minute, the day by day, the narrative of that time can still be a place of hope can still be from a belief of hope. Now, the devil is going to work real hard. He is working to try to steal our living hope from us. We cannot let that happen. You cannot allow the devil to convince you that he has robbed you of the future that is ahead. You've got to hold on to this living hope and never let go. Now, in the next few minutes, quickly, I want to walk you through how to avoid the path of hopelessness. How many of you would agree with me right now that we can't become hopeless? We can't. We have no other option than to be filled with hope, than to believe that better days lie ahead. So avoiding the path of hopelessness. First, let's recognize that there is a battle taking place for our hope. And on this battle, there are two sides. There is God or Jesus, and there is the enemy. And with God, we have a promise of hope. We have a promise of security. We have a promise of peace. We have promises for our family. We've got promises for our future. And on the other side is the enemy. And the enemy seeks to bring turmoil. He seeks to bring pain. He seeks to bring trials. He seeks to bring lack and sickness. Right now, like never before, you and I are surrounded by the shouting voice of hope crushers. They're shouting at us. They are everywhere. They're on social media. They're on the news. Maybe it's people in your family or friends. And all of these voices are working so hard. They are designed to get you to quit to give up, to become hopeless. And I know you know this, but just be reminded right now, that's exactly what the devil wants. He wants you to give up. He wants you to quit. He wants the church that has risen up like never before around the world to surrender everything that we have gained. He wants us to quit. We can't let that happen. Did you know that the word hopeless does not appear in the Bible? The word hopelessness does not appear in the Bible. Why? Well, you and I don't serve the God of hopelessness. We serve the God of hope. You and I are not children of hopelessness. You and I are children of hope. Now, what is hopelessness? It is a feeling of futility. It is where we feel useless where we feel ineffective. It is a passive abandonment of our lives to fate. Maybe you've been sitting in your home and maybe you've been feeling this very feeling. Like, you know what? I I have no control. I'm just going to let whatever happens, happens. You see, hopelessness is a world of accepting inevitability. It's a world of resigning to fate, of giving up. And all of this leads to a life of impossibilities. Look, this is what hopelessness sounds like. Hopelessness sounds like this. Whatever happens, happens. You know what? It is what it is. Maybe it sounds like this. You know what? I'm going to lose everything. If I get sick, then I get sick. I mean, why even bother? Why have I been doing all of this if this is what was going to happen? Now, what we're really talking about here is a this is impossible mindset. This is the enemy trying to get you to quit, trying to get you to let go of your promised hope. You see, when something is impossible, then there is no hope. When you become convinced that something is impossible, then you've surrendered your hope. 
And the truth is, is that to declare over your life that there is no way that your situation is hopeless is to declare that there is no Jesus in your life. Think about that for a moment. When we declare that there is nothing we can do, that there is no way our situation can turn around, then we're declaring that there's no Jesus in our life. And my family, we can't do that. We cannot do that. We've got to fight. We've got to rise up. We've got to reject hopelessness. We've got to defend our hope. We've got to remind ourselves that God's word is guaranteed. That he said he can't back off of his promises. He cannot break them. My family, we are at a crossroads. We're at a crossroads as people. We're at a crossroads as families. We're at a crossroads in our city. We're at a crossroads in our country. We've got a choice. Are we going to sit at home and just accept doom and gloom? Are we going to sit at home and believe that our future is going down the drain? Or are we going to be at home holding on to hope, standing on our believing and speaking, claiming that this is the victory that overcomes the world? Come on, my family. What is going to overcome the coronavirus? What is going to overcome this negative economic turn? What is going to overcome? It is our faith. It is our believing and our speaking. It is you and I holding on to God's promises and saying, you know what? I believe that God's word is true. I may not understand what I see. I may be concerned about what I see, but this I know I will not let go of my hope. I'm going to hold on with both hands and out of my mouth, I'm going to speak God's promises. I'm going to declare that I've got a hope and a future. Amen. I'm going to believe that. You see, that's the crossroads we're at. We've got to choose to say, I am not going to become hopeless. I'm going to hold on to hope. Be reminded today that Luke 1 verse 37 says, with God, nothing is impossible. Would you say that right now, right where you are? With God, nothing is impossible. Did you know this? We can also say this, that also for God, doing nothing is impossible. Maybe you've been sitting at home and you're thinking, why isn't God doing anything? I can assure you that God is doing something. He is moving on behalf of his children. We've got to continue to trust in that. Why? Because he watches over his word to perform it. He watches over his word to perform it. And like never before, we have got to believe that those promises are true, that they are yes and amen. And he is watching over his word to perform it. Be reminded today, God did not stop being God because of the coronavirus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Romans 5 verse 5. This is one of my favorite verses. It says, now this hope, this hope, our hope in Jesus Christ, this hope does not disappoint. It does not disappoint. You see, that's why I can sit here today and I can comfortably declare out of my mouth, you know what? We're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. We are going to to make it. God is going to take care of us. Things are going to turn around. You see, Jesus is my guarantee of this hope. Believe this with me today. Would you just believe that God is not going to let us down? Amen. Now, as a child of God, there is never a moment, there is never a circumstance, there is never a disease, there is never a virus that is greater than your God. Never. There is never anything the devil that can do that is greater than your God. Therefore, you should never feel hopeless. You should never feel hopeless. What does that mean? It means that if I'm experiencing hopelessness in my life, then I need to deal with it. I need to address it with God's word. I, how do I do that? Well, 
Whatever it is I'm wrestling with, wherever I'm beginning to feel that sense of hopelessness, then I need to confess the word over it. Let me give you an example. Maybe you're struggling with how you're going to pay your bills. Well, then I would encourage you to remind yourself that Philippians says, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You've got to begin to speak that verse over and over. Father, I thank you today that I may not know how, but I believe that you, God, are going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Maybe you're watching and physically you're struggling. Maybe your health has taken a hit. Well, then I encourage you, don't give up. Instead, remind yourself that Jesus bore your sicknesses. He carried your diseases and by his stripes, you are healed. Say it with me right now. Say, by his stripes, I am healed. You see, whenever we begin to experience a feeling of hopelessness, we need to address it. We need to begin to speak to it. We need to activate our faith in that area. We've got to use our believing and speaking to overcome that feeling of hopelessness so that we won't let go of our living hope. Amen. I want to remind you that if God says he promised it, then it is possible. Whatever God says he's going to do, then he's going to do it. So if God promised it to you, then it is possible. Be reminded today that we serve the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen? We serve a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Church, you and I right now, in this moment, we've got to reach past all appearances. We cannot afford to be moved by what we see. We cannot buy into everything that we hear. Instead, we've got to choose to believe the report of the Lord. And what is that report? That report is that he's got a hope for you. That report is that he's got a future for you. That report is that that future is not ordinary. It is the future that you have been believing for. Listen to this. Do you know that Abraham was at a point of hopelessness? He was at a season of his life where he just gave up. He said, I don't know why, God, but obviously this isn't going to happen for me. I'm just going to give up. And then look at this verse, Romans 4, verse 18. It says, who contrary to hope. Now, what are we talking about? You see, Abraham had every reason to feel hopeless. Every reason. He wanted a son, and he was way past the age to have a son. And I mean way past the age. So contrary to what the world said, contrary to worldly hope, when Abraham was at this crossroads of choosing between hope and hopelessness, he chose to believe. He chose hope in God instead. This is how it reads. It says, who contrary to worldly hope in godly hope he believed. And what happened? God gave him the desires of his heart. Why? Because he didn't surrender to hopelessness, even though hopelessness was there. He didn't surrender to it. Instead, he decided to hold on to hope. You see, sometimes you don't even know what to believe. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation where it doesn't make any sense. And in those moments, you've got to grab onto hope just like Abraham did. Not the worldly hope, but the God kind of hope. The hope that is guaranteed. And you've got to believe that your God is good and that he does good. You've got to remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My family, I believe with all of my heart that God is going to turn this situation around. Would you believe that with me today? Would you believe that God is going to turn this situation around? Come on, church, against all worldly hope in God and godly hope, let's believe. Let's believe that God is going to turn this around. Let's believe that as we walk through this season that we're not going to get sick. Can I get an amen today? Have hope that God is going to take care of your bodies. Let's believe that we're not going to get depressed. Let's believe that we're not going to be broken, that we're not going to lose our jobs. Let's believe that we're not going to lose our businesses, that we're not going to lose everything we worked for. Let's believe that we are not going to lose our homes and that our families are going to be taken care of. You see, I believe 
that God is going to take care of us, that even when I can't see it, even when I don't feel it, even when I don't understand it, God is still moving and he is the God of miracle signs and wonders. Would you believe that with me today? Would you believe that we are coming out of this? Would you believe that better days lay ahead? Would you just hold on to hope with everything that you've got? Would you reject hopelessness and would you instead say, you know what, I'm going to trust in God. God. I'm going to believe that his word is true, that he cannot break his word, and that my hope in God cannot disappoint. Amen. Well, I hope I've encouraged you today. Hey, listen, I want to take a moment and I just want to pray. Let's pray over this word. And then I want to give you an invitation to have a relationship with Jesus. Would you join me for just two more minutes? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that this word breathes life into our spirits, that it encourages us, that it strengthens us. May each and every person be reminded that you are in this with us, that you are moving on our behalf, and that better days lie ahead. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, if you're joining us today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you to have a relationship with Jesus. Why is this so important? Because in a world of uncertainty, Jesus is certain. Jesus is certain. Who is Jesus? He is the Son of God. He died on the cross. And when he died, he shed his blood so that you and I could have a better life. What is that better life? Well, the Bible describes it as the God kind of life. I talked about it a little bit in today's message. And the God kind of life gives me two assurances. Number one, it tells me that when I'm living the God kind of life, that when my time on earth is through, I can spend an eternity in heaven. But number two, the God kind of life assures me that I'm not doing life alone, that God is with me, that everything that he did for me is mine for right here, right now. That's why I could preach to you today that God's going to come through for us. See, God doesn't want you to live life alone. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to walk through life with you. He wants to be the peace and assurance that you need, especially right now in this season. So if you're watching today and you would say, Shannon, you're talking to me. I want a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you would say, Shannon, I think you might be talking to me, but I'm not sure. Then I would say I am talking to you. Maybe you're watching and you would say, you know what? At one time I knew Jesus, but I've gotten away from him. Then I would say you need to come back to him. Maybe you would just say, Shannon, I need to get right with God. If that's you, I want to pray with you right there, right where you are. Would you just bow your head with me and say this simple prayer? Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for loving me and thank you for your grace. From this day forward, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, would you email us at care at alfc.com? We want to connect with you. At some point, we want to be able to give you a Bible. We just want to make sure that we continue to walk this with you and help you get to know the God that you said yes to today. Hey, church family, I love you with all of my heart. Hey, we're in this together, and God is going to get us through. Amen. Have a great evening. Hey, what an amazing experience we just had together in church. Man, that wow. was incredible. The worship was, so was on good. point. Hey, and I, I really hope that the word was exactly what you needed. Yeah. I hope it met you right where you are and spoke to everything that is going on in your life. And maybe you're one of the people that responded at the end of service to start your journey with Christ or maybe rededicate your life. We want to hear from you. Would you text the number below? We'd like to get a chance to to know you and give you some resources to help you learn how to experience this life that Jesus came to give us. Absolutely. You know, we're here to serve you and to care for you as best as we can. And so whether it's your first time watching or you've been a part of our church family for some time, listen, Abundant Living is here to care for you and your family. And so if there's any way that we can serve you, if there's any way way that we can just help you or or really just be a support for you or your family, would you let us know? Would you just send us a message at care at ALFC.com? Our team is here to serve serve you and your family. And the truth is we're looking forward to really walking alongside you and your family the very best way we possibly can. And I don't know if you guys heard about this, but last week, 
Prime got together for a very special service on YouTube Live. It was incredible. Hey, if you want some more church, why don't you jump over to YouTube yeah. and double dip? Absolutely. Hey, Prime Culture is the college student and young adult ministry here at Abundant Living. And last week we had our very first Culture Night Live. So good. It was incredible. And so you can catch the replay of that at youtube.com slash this prime culture and it'll bless your life man it was a really really cool experience yeah. make sure you stay connected with us everywhere right yeah there's so many uh, things happening here at church yeah. church life is alive so join us on social media instagram facebook on our app we have a lot of great things coming out to help you your kids your family a lot of great stuff happening yeah. so you got to stay connected yeah let's stay connected together hey listen we'll see you soon we love you have an incredible week